Hello folks, it's Professor Fiore back once again to look at some Python programming. Today we're going to look at random number generation. To be technically accurate, we're really talking about pseudo-random number sequences. Now for all practical intents and purposes, there's no difference. The reality is, you know, computers are deterministic. It's hard to get something that's truly, truly random. So we're going to look at a technique where uh, we're going to call a function. It's going to return a random, at least what looks like a random value. But if we did it long enough, I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of calls, eventually we would see a pattern. But as I said, for normal sorts of uses, for things like circuit simulations or games, this will be more than sufficient. So the first thing we need to do is import an external library, just like we did with math. We need to import the random library. There's a series of functions in here that we're going to take advantage of. The first one we're going to look at is the sort of most general, random.random. .random. Now this is going to return a value a uh, double value, a real point, a real um, number. So all I'm going to do is just print this. Random.random .random returns a value between 0 and 1, a floating point value. Every time we call it, we get a different value. All right? So to prove the point, I'm just going to make a little loop here. Let's say we do 20 of these. And then uh, we're just going to print out the value of x just to sort of prove the point. All right, so you can see what's going on here, right? We have all these nice numbers. This has what's referred to as a rectangular or uniform probability. In other words, the chances of uh, the number 0.111 coming out are equal to the number 0.5 or equal to the number you know, 0.932. Any, any value is equally likely as any other. All right. Now, there are cases where we don't want that. Sometimes we want what's referred to as a Gaussian distribution. In other words, where the numbers are sort of centered around a value, it's more likely that they would be in one place other than another. Um, but for you know, what we need to do, this is perfectly sufficient. All right. Now, from this basic function, we'll be able to actually derive other sort of ranges, because if you think about it, just going from 0 to 1, eh, you know, it's by itself is useful, but there are certainly applications where we need something a little bit, a little bit broader, let's say. For example, suppose we need to maybe simulate uh, a coin flip or you know, the, throw of, the throw of dice, like a six-sided or a 12-sided dice. Um, how do we do that? Or maybe there's just a specific number of things, you know, four choices that we want to randomly pick through. Well, in the random module, there is another little function called randrange. And this will produce integer values for us. Now, if we just put a number in here, like uh, 10, what this will do is give us a value. X will be returned a value of between 0 and 9, right? Up to, but not including 10. So there you go, right? 9, 3, 6, 5, 8, blah, 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 blah. Notice I ran it a second time. That sequence is completely different. Every time you run this, you're going to get a different sequence, right? So anything between 1 and 9 in this case. Now, I can also add a second number to this list, right? 10, I'll say 10, 20. And this will give us a range. So now it's going to give us anything between 10 and up to, but not including 20. Right, so there's a whole bunch of numbers. So this is getting better, right, a little bit more flexible. Finally, I can add a third value. And this is essentially sort of a jumping value. You might guess what this is going to do. What do you think? Yeah, it's only looking at every other value. So 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, when we look through this list. 
So that's great. Um, you know, suppose we want to simulate, you know, the pick of a resistor out of a bin, right? I've got a 250 ohm resistor, it's 10%. So it's plus or minus 25 ohms. In other words, uh, a legal value would be 250 plus or minus 25. In other words, 225 to 275. So you would be tempted to perhaps do something like that, you know, 225, 275, one, okay, or you wouldn't need that. Of course, that only gives you whole values. In other words, you could never sort of pull out, um, you know, 255.73. And integer might be fine, but you know, what if it's a pretty small range? In other words, what if you need to go from like uh, 0.5 to 1.3? That's not going to work. So can we go back to the original random.random? .random? Is, that, is that possible? And the answer is, of course, der, yes. Um, basically, what we're going to do is two things to the number. We're going to scale it and offset it. So let's use this example of, of uh, going from, with our resistor, 250 plus or minus 10%. So that gives us a range, as I said, from 225 up to 275. So that's a, a, a delta, if you will, of 50. There's a total change of 50. So what I'm going to do is get my random.random, .random, and I'm going to multiply that by 50. All right, now let's see what happens here first. All right, so you can see I've got all these values, right? There's something nearly zero. I've got something, you know, right here, pretty close to 50, all over the place. Now, the second thing we're going to do is simply offset the result. In other words, the base value that I have. So this is going to give me a, basically an X value between zero and 50. I just need it from 225 to 275. So I'm just going to add 225 to that. And there we go. We got a whole bunch of values between 225 and 275, right? There's a 272 right there. All right, we got some things towards the middle, you know, 257. There's a 225 and change right here. You know, run it again, see what we get. All right, yeah, again, right? Pretty nice. Every time you do this, we get slightly different values. So this would be like you walking up to, uh, you know, a part spin. A 250 ohm resistor parts bin and just pulling resistors out and measuring them with a digital multimeter. This is the kind of thing you would see. So it's, as I said, very useful if you're going to do, um, you know, a circuit simulation. Uh, game simulation, really useful. You know, um, if you don't have randomness in a game, then it becomes completely predictable. And, you know, what fun is that going to be, right? Okay, so we're going to take um, a closer look at, at using the random, the random function, the, ra the idea of random numbers um, in one of the labs. We actually make a game that's based on a scene in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And if you haven't noticed, right, there are a lot of, of sort of inside jokes in the language Python that are associated with Monty Python. That's really where the name comes from. It has nothing to do with the snake even though that's the little icon that they use. It's really all about Monty Python. So um, we might want to take a look at that. But before you do that, I, I suggest you just sort of play around with some of these functions. Look in the uh, random module and see what you can find. Um, you know, this base item, this random.random, .random, is very useful. But, you know, rand range is useful. There are other items. There's a, like I said, a, a Gaussian uh, distribution function. There's there's a bunch of things in there. So my suggestion is just sort of play around with this and try different values. Try to do different ranges, if you will. Um, you know, how do you pull out a floating point value from, let's say, minus ten to zero? You know, we're looking at positive numbers. How do you do negative numbers? You know, how does this idea over here? change. Or maybe I want to do something like from negative 50 to positive 50. Right? Things to consider, things to try. Experiment. That's the best way to learn. All right, so 
We'll pick this up with some more good stuff next time.